The Coneybury Anomaly. It's an excellent title for a film, I'd go and see it, but also a marvellously enigmatic name for yet another hole in the ground near Stonehenge. However, the name is actually completely circumstantial and accidental. But as we hope you'll agree as you listen to the rest of this show, entirely appropriate. Yes, the Coneybury Anomaly. Uh, I think we should clear it up right at the beginning. It's not an accidental name, but it's called the Coneybury Anomaly because it was found in geological work and it happens to be a geological anomaly. It's not an archaeological anomaly. But uh, yeah. what is it? It's, or a uh, geomagnetic anomaly, yes. It's, it's certainly um, not that, yes. Uh, yeah, well, it was, it's accidental <laughs> in the sense it was only discovered. They weren't expecting to discover it. It was um, discovered because they were doing the um, geophys for yes. the excavation of the Coneybury Henge, Indeed. Uh, which is uh, just down there. Uh, as I say, what is it? About uh, less than a mile, isn't it, from Stonehenge? Uh, it's down south, yeah. uh, southeast. Yeah, the other southeast side of the A303 yes. again. Mm. Yes, so much stuff in the Stonehenge landscape. Uh, yeah, well, this is roughly 3,900 BCE. Mm-hmm. And um, basically it's a pit. It's a large pit in which they found what can only be described as the remains of a feast. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a list here of what was found in the pit mm-hmm. that um, uh, of the pottery shards. So the pottery, went, well, when, uh, if it had been reassembled, if you like, the broken bits of pottery, they were from a minimum of 41 vessels, uh, plus copious flints and assemblages of animal bones representing... Uh, at least 10 cows, uh, several roe deer, two red deer, a pig, a beaver, and trout. Uh, I don't think I've missed anything out, have I? <laughs> no, not that I n- know of. Any tools, were there? Any tools? That's, I think that's, that's well, sort of rather the, a point uh, we'll get uh, on to later. I don't know if they've been mm. enumerated as such, but it's, it's not so much the numbers as the types that's of interest yes. as, we, as we get on. Yes. Um, um, but what makes this so significant, really, is that th- when they did an isotopic analysis on the animal remains, uh, on the bones, that what became apparent was that these animals were from different locations, um, you know, different distances apart. Uh, So what we're looking at here is the coming together of groups of people from different places. And it's thought that this was um, uh, a meeting of the farming people and the hunter-gathering people coming together in this feasting. So it's clearly a thing of peace, whether it was uh, <laughs> just uh, all coming together to uh, to be together, or we, you know, was it was it a wedding feast? Was it? Well, who knows? Who knows what it was? But uh, each of these people bringing different things from their uh, from their vicinity. So some people brought cows, some people brought deer. Mm. Some people brought the river fauna, the beaver and the uh, mm. and the trout. Um, yeah. It's it's a it's a wonderful story there in the ground, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, the, the, these things did not come from very far away either. The, you know, mm. we're not talking about vast differences, but they did come from uh, from different, relatively adjacent areas and um the the fascination with this the reason why there was a big fascination with the Coneybury anomaly as the the name stuck stuck um is that 3900 bc is a very very interesting um period of time um in prehistory in britain because that is the time when the the first farmers were establishing themselves. Um, uh, and the Coneybury uh, anomaly actually represents the earliest representation of pottery um, in the Neolithic. Is that not the case? That, it, it is the case. 
it is yeah, the case. So yeah. phenomenally important from that aspect. But when you understand that you know, we've got Neolithic, Neolithic pots, screwed ware in, is it grooved ware? No, I may, may have to correct that. But Neolithic pottery in uh, a pit together with what seems like uh, hunter-gatherer activities represented by the remains in the pit, then that big question mark comes over it. Now, it wasn't the, the, that conclusion that we've got several groups coming together uh, was not leapt to immediately. At hmm. first, it was, and I don't think, um, I don't know if the, the pottery was left out of the equation or what have you, but the tendency was still to think that this was still Mesolithic people adopting farming practice rather than an admixture of um, people from the Neolithic community and people from the pre-existing hunter-gathering community coming together in the same place to uh, have mm. uh, this feast. Originally, it was, it was interpreted, I think, even by uh, Julian Richards himself uh, as an extension of the Mesolithic or, or example of a Mesolithic people adopting uh, farming practices. But whereas we know that that's not how it happened, that uh, farming mm. came with people who came across the channel. Mm. Uh, and this is very early days. This is early days. This is before um, the building of long barracks. This is before the building of uh, causeway enclosures, which many, it seems, you know, round and about the country, often have echoes of the kind of thing that were going on at the Coneybury Anomaly in terms of feasting and the de deposition of um, uh, uh, of uh, the remains of cattle by the time we get to um, causewayed enclosures. Mm. It's definitely domesticated cattle, but the, the, the factors well, these are all of the rodeo... Yeah, go on. Well, these are all domestic cattle. Uh, yeah. The obviously the, the the deer are wild. That's the point. But, yeah. uh, um, but uh, the cattle. Uh, I'm actually looking down my list of uh, uh, of stuff from the uh, from the research paper, which actually, as an aside, uh, it's a lovely title of the paper. It's called "A Meeting in the Forest." Um, <laughs> And it uh, turns out it probably wasn't forest at all, uh, but it uh, doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> the thing is, all of the cattle were domestic. And another intriguing aspect of all of the animals were female. Yeah. Uh, and uh, whatever is the that all the animals of that, were female, or is that all the domestic cattle were female? Uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, distinction. Well, it is an in an interesting distinction, and in, in the paper they say all the animals are female, oh, and really? you you could you could interpret that either way, to be fair. Mm. But um, but the the suggestion, certainly in terms of the cattle, is well, uh, were they getting rid of their older, dairy. Uh, less productive dairy yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, cattle, which is possible. Yeah, but also uh, some of them were quite young as well, I do believe. It wasn't necessarily the older cattle. Some of them, the cattle were also quite young. Um, well, the uh, cattle, uh, the, the thing about the domestic cattle is that they came from at least three and maybe four different locations. Oh, OK. <clears throat> so it was, it was different. The interpretation is that it was different farming folk who were, who were coming together bringing... Uh, cattle, yeah. Not that it was one group of people bringing cattle because they yeah. came from different places. Um, uh, but the, but the road here just that? came from one place. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't. You know, they were coming from the same places as the domestic cattle were coming from. Mm. So it implies a different group of people would have been bringing the. The roe deer. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, another yeah, yeah. kicker in terms of the distinction between um, the roe deer and the cattle is the fact that the cattle, there were no um, um, uh, legs <laughs> in, That's true. in the pit. Um, yes. No leg bones in the pit, uh, whereas mm. the roe deer still had their legs. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yes. not articulated, that, of uh, course, but you know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is correct. So, so it makes you wonder. Well, is it because uh, cows' legs are just so heavy in meat that uh, you know they can be 
taken off to be used elsewhere. <clears throat> uh, there's an, an interesting thing that came up, uh, you know, in the discussions about uh, about this, and certainly uh, things that they explored in the paper as well, was that. Uh, well, number one, you know, if you were if you were bringing uh, if you were if you were trying to be reasonably even handed in in how food was distributed, well, how many deer, how many roe deer make a cow in terms of value? Um, you know, how would you <laughs> estimate that? Because there was something like seventeen. Was it seventeen roe deer? I think it was something like that. Um, but then, for me, I think that has to be flipped completely the other way round, simply because of the presence of the single beaver and trout. That mm. it it seems more likely to me that if you've got different groups of people, uh, people with different cultural lifestyles coming together for whatever reason they were coming together, that well. You know, if it was just one group of people who brought the beaver and the fish, then that clearly doesn't equate to the uh, maybe the wealthier people who were bringing the cattle. It, the, the important thing was that you brought something. Mm. Seems mm -hmm. to me, anyway. That's my interpretation of that. Yeah. Um, just skippity skip back a, a little bit. You said it's a large pit. Uh, it's something. To, it's not that huge because it's just over six foot across and four feet deep. You know? ah, it's a big I don't pit know how, to chuck you. Yeah. It, it, it is fair enough, you know. But yeah. a, a sense of scale is important, I think, <laughs> when we're talking about these. Big I won't and, argue and with what that. People yes. can put um, into their imaginations. Yeah. Yes, well, it, it's 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 reminiscent of uh, when you were in Argentina. It's reminiscent of your uh, your your yes, pit is. of offerings. Yes, uh, uh, you know where all sorts of things are just tossed into the ground as uh, uh, yes, it's a, a mixture a, a between. Brief, a brief aside: uh, I was in Argentina some uh, some years ago. Now, my goodness, it was before we made Standing with Stones. Uh, but anyway, I was uh, way up in the uh, in the hills in northern Argentina. We were invited to the uh, the Pachamama f f festival, uh, and it was just a privilege to be at a site that was you know celebrating a prehistoric ceremony here with with stuff going into the ground uh, in front of our eyes, you know, in front of Doug. In, in into dug pits, you know. And this is a this was normal life uh, for them, you know. So when we come yeah. across, you know, pits in the Neolithic or wherever, Mesolithic, with uh, depositions of uh, uh, of whatever it may may be in the ground, it's no surprise to me at all when I saw uh, packets of Marlboro, um, you know, coke yeah. cans being being poured into the pit, you know, coca leaves being put into the pit, the remains of the food being put into the pit. It was just per perfectly normal mm. uh, to them, unremarkable. It's what they did. And uh, yeah, in that respect, um, that was an eye opener. And, you know, it gives a little yeah. bit of insight here. But this seems to be, um, yeah, you wonder what was going on there. It, maybe there is an element of that in it. I hadn't really thought about it this that way before. I thought, yeah, it, it, it's occurred yeah. somewhat uh, silly of me, you know, because I've I've sort of it's occurred to me as a as a sort of leftovers rubbish. Pit and of course no, this is an offerings pit as well, isn't it? Because it's it the could, remains. It, it could be yeah, of it, activities that go into it. So uh, Lord knows what else <laughs> else was yeah. put in there. You know the foodstuffs, the drink, the what have you? Uh, yeah, what yeah. other wooden artifacts? Maybe who knows? Uh, as yes, a, as a celebration. Yes, isn't it a shame that uh, <clears throat> they couldn't uh, test the uh, pottery? fragments for you know what was inside them wouldn't it be nice if they yeah. actually found beer <laughs> we know it was there <laughs> yeah um so so those are the basic elements of it i mean there's, there's been quite a discussion about you know what it means in terms of farmers and uh and mesolithic hunter gatherers coming to, together at, at this point um, you know, it's not cut and dried. You pay your money, you take your choices. It's so often mm. the, the the case. Um, but I think it's a. I think think the Coneybury anomaly is something special in the landscape because it it holds the whole chronology together in a certain way. Uh, because before, not long before the Coneybury anomaly 
event, um, activities at Black Mead, you know, would have just uh, ceased or, you know, uh, uh, blended into the landscape a, a, a bit more. And then mm. after this, you know, sometime after this, you've got the uh, Stonehenge curses uh, uh, occurring and we're still some way before even somebody begins to... Uh, dig a ditch and bank for uh, the stone uh, phase one of Stonehenge. Yeah. Um, even the uh, associated um, uh, Coneybury Henge was not there, of course, when the pit was dug. That's still, mm. uh, what is it? What, a thousand years off, isn't it? So yeah. it's crazy, you know, when you think yeah. of this, about the stretch of time through which all this this. Uh, story, this inhabitation, the activity on this special place, the uh, Salisbury Plain stretches through, and and uh, it's wonderful to be able to see all these things, or you know, be aware of all these things in the landscape at the same time that we're in this mm. privileged position to look back through uh, um, down through down this tunnel, time tunnel, <laughs> yeah, is the, yeah. uh, uh, and, and and try and piece it all together. It's uh, you know, fantastic it is story very much that, isn't it? It, it, it? It's as if you're looking at the the landscape, as you say, this time tunnel, but it's punctuated just every <laughs> yes. it, every thousand years or every five hundred years. There's another punctuation <laughs> yeah. mark. Yeah. How many stories must the landscape be able to tell from that vast sway of time? Yeah, yeah it's quite wonderful. So uh, on that um, grand question, is it uh, time to leave our little examination I, of the Coneybury anomaly? I, I think so. I, you know, I, I, I think for, for me it's just um, it's the romance, really, of these, uh, all, these different groups of people coming together in a peaceful way. Because you can't you you can't interpret that any other way. So it's mm. uh, for me, it's a lovely part of the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Okay. Well, with that, we will say uh, bye bye. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to take on board um, the uh, other uh, elements of this series. We've talked about the Wilsford Shaft. We will be. Uh, yes. We have, or will be talking about uh, Blickmead, all in this sort of tiny area, all just yeah. south of the A three hundred three, within sight of of Stonehenge. Um, yes. You know, hope you found that fun. If nothing else, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>